Hi guys, it's time to start talking about classes and object-oriented programming. Um, I know I said we were going to be making a, a more uh, elegant way to handle those dynamically allocated character arrays, but really that was just a way to segue into classes, and we won't actually be making that class for um, a while. So first, to give you an idea of what classes can be used for, I'm going to go ahead and open up iTunes here. So my only song is this blank song. It you know, it's 3 minutes, 44 seconds. I've played it three times, but it doesn't have a name. It doesn't have an artist, album, genre, or rating. So if, if I, it, does, it does have a music. I mean, if you, if you want to call it that, so I can go ahead and play this. Now those of you who might have heard that song before will realize that it's the Gusty Gardens theme from Super Mario Galaxy. So now I can go in here and I can change the name Gusty Gardens. I believe it's by Koji Kondo. Uh, Super Mario Galaxy soundtrack. You know, and we can input things like this as part of that song. Now what if we added multiple songs to this? If we had other songs that we wanted to add to our library? How is the computer going to be storing that data? Because it's going to have to store a name for every single song, an artist for every single song, an album, as well as a time and a play count and a genre. It has to store quite a few things. So how might you think that iTunes does this? Do you think it has a song one name, a song two play count? Or, or Well, I guess it would have to be song one as well, and it'd have to have eventually, you know, eventually would have get the song 2 name, song 2 play count. It would have to make all of these variables and they'd be very difficult to keep track of, not to mention kind of loose and difficult to work with. So for a situation like that, um, that's that's what you might use classes for. So let's let's go ahead and make our very own class. Um, like I hinted at a long time ago, classes are going to be our own data types. So let's include iostream like normal. And I'll go ahead and write out main just to have it there. And then above main, I'm going to declare a class. Now, the first class I'm going to make is a simple class. It's just going to be a rectangle. I'm not going to do the song or the, the character array like I was getting at. Those were just examples. Um, though we might make them eventually, I suppose. Maybe not a song, because that's pretty it's pretty complicated. But um, um, let's just make a rectangle. So let's, we type class, and then the name of our class. I'll call it rectangle. And then start a block like you would normally. It's very important that you end this block with a semicolon. If you forget this semicolon, um, you don't get a friendly reminder that you forgot the semicolon. You get a bunch of vague errors because it doesn't really know what happened. So it's very important that you remember that semicolon. So I like to just put it in every time I declare my class. Um, okay, so now that you're within the class, there are, the thing about classes is there, there are two parts to them. There are members, which are variables, and then there are methods. Now members are things like song title, song album, uh, song time, song length, or something like that. Now for our rectangle, we're going to want to have a, um, I guess we should just have a width and a height, something to keep it pretty simple. So we'll just have those two members. So the way that we add our members into the class is, well, members are actually kind of tricky because there are a couple le levels in which you can add the members. And I'm going to explain those later. For now, just keep in mind that when you're declaring your members, type private, colon, and then below that, you put your members. So I'll make integer width, integer height, just like you normally would. Now this private, um, it means that these variables are not editable from outside of the class. We could also have made this public, and then these would be editable from outside of the class. But I'll talk more about that later, because it won't make much sense until we really start using classes. Um, 
Now what you shouldn't do is you shouldn't assign numbers to this, like you shouldn't assign 10. Don't do that. Just leave it integer with semicolon. That's all you should have. And these can be any type of data. I mean, you could have character pointers, you could have uh, floating point numbers. In fact, we, we probably should give these a little bit more precision and make these floating points instead of integers. Um, but actually, I will just use integers because they're the simplest to work with right now. So after you've declared your members, go ahead and type public, like I said before. Now, a basic rule of thumb that you should kind of follow when you're starting out is that member variables, like these integers, are private. Now when you start to make methods, those should be public. So now we're going to declare our methods for this class. Every class has something called a constructor. And the constructor is called every time you make an instance of the class. And by instance, I mean when we, we say integer width, we're making an instance of the class integer. Now, because integer is such a low-level type, it doesn't really have a constructor, though it kind of does, because it does tell the compiler that it's going to need enough space for, to hold this integer. But our rectangle constructor will be a little bit different than that. But the, uh, the, the thing about constructors is that they don't have a return type, but you still declare them like normal, normal functions. So let's... the name of every constructor is the name of the class. So it will be rectangle. And then, in these parentheses, we can put uh, arguments that we'd like to be passed uh, when the object is created. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to type rectangle, semicolon. Um, now, your class might also want to have a destructor. And a destructor is called when the class goes out of scope. And by scope, I mean... If this was within, you know, some fun you know about scope. If this was within some function outside of main, and we declared a rectangle, when that rectangle goes out of scope, the destructor is called, and it basically uh, deallocates the object. So the way that you declare a destructor is tilde, and then the name of your class. Okay, so that's the constructor and the destructor, and those are in the public uh, level. Access level, I think, is the right name. So let's make another function, or another method, I should say, because it's part of the class. So let's make this um, calc area. So what this is going to do is it's going to calculate the area of this rectangle and then return it as an integer. Let's make another one, calc uh, perimeter. It'll calculate uh, the perimeter around the rectangle. So, yeah. So that's that's our class uh, declaration. Now we're going to define these methods outside of the class. So let's define our constructor. And the way that we tell the compiler that we want to talk about this function right here, or any of these, is we preface them with the name of the class. And by that, it, we, we go rectangle, and then we use two colons, which is, I believe, called the scope operator. And it tells the compiler that we're not just talking about a global rectangle function or a global constructor. Like, that wouldn't even make sense. We're talking about the function or the method called rectangle uh, within the constructor or, or within the rectangle class. So that's how you would do that. So what we're going to do in the constructor is I'm just going to provide some default values for width and height. Let's go ahead and set width equal to something like 10, and I'll set height equal to something like 15. Okay, just default values, um, so they are initialized to something. That's all. Notice we don't have to return anything. Now let's make our destructor. And I'm not actually going to have the destructor do anything. It's going to be an empty function. So now, let's make our calculate area function. It's going to have the integer return type. And then the method called is called calculate area. So in this, in this method, we can use these variables because they're part of the class. And they're technically within the scope of this function or method. So the area, as you know, is just width times height. 
or if you didn't know that, the area of a rectangle is its width multiplied by its height. So let's go ahead and just return width times height. Okay, that'll get the area. And then let's make calculate perimeter. Now the perimeter is slightly more complicated. If we imagine this window as a rectangle with, with you know, uh, some width and some height, the perimeter is going to be 2 times the width plus 2 times the height. So slightly less intuitive, but simple all the same. So 2 times the width plus 2 times the height. Okay, and that's going to be our return value. 